Hi, I'm Kenny Siegel, designer and co-creator of the Snarling Dogs FX pedals. Having been a professional guitarist most of my life and growing up in my father's electronic shop, it was only natural for me to build my own unique guitar effects to enhance my sound. About eight years ago, the late great Charlie Stringer and I got together to discuss marketing my pedals and Snarling Dogs effects were born. Thank you for your interest in Snarling Dogs. Got two eyes and a nose, got ten feet and ten toes. We can put it to the test and we'll see what works our best in the tuba. One thing before I go, there's something you should know. It's the part of your soul that makes you tuba. I think it's too Yeah, yeah. Think it's too Think it's too Hey guys, here we are back again in Encore Chat, and we're here with Kenny Seagull, who um, is a been a guitar player for many, 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 many years, and he's also not just a guitar player, he's also an inventor. He also invented what we call the Snarling Dog pedals, and um, also has been playing all over the place, all over the circuit, did a lot of original materials, knows, you know, just tons and tons of people. This is Kenny, and I have a couple questions to ask Kenny. Um, Kenny, how long have you, have you been playing guitar? Uh, a thousand years. Thousand. Not thousand two. And one. Not, not two. Not thousand one. Okay. All right. <laughs> and uh, did you, when you were you, uh, did you do traditional playing? Did you learn like study guitar and? No. No. I, okay. I'm a street guy that um, wanted to know more and worked with some great guitar players and then. Uh, I, you know, eventually learned from some of the best and then used it to, uh, used my knowledge from them to just further my own uh, studies. Right. You know? But you still, I mean, you read and you can do oh, all that. Oh, yeah, I can do all that. Okay, I, You know, right. I've spent enough time. Yeah, doing all, <laughs> doing all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And um, just to back up a little bit, too. Um, how long, I mean, like you played the whole circuits, you played all over and you did a lot of trade shows too with your inventing and stuff. It, it, so one thing led to another. Did the, your music playing and all that got you interested in electronics too as far as like, like the curiosity or just as you invented sounds as you were playing? Let, let me say this. I've always liked electronic music, but also my dad was an electrical engineer. Okay. And ever since I was a little kid, I worked in his shops and after I got like guitars, electric guitars, if my amp blew up, my dad would say, he wasn't really an audio electronics guy, but he said, well, let's look at it. You know, we'd open it up, you see something that's burnt or cracked or whatever, you replace it, and if it worked, it worked, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, so I just, I just kind of got into it. And then people knew I did electronics, so they'd ask me, can you build one of these? And I'd be like, I don't know. You know, I'll, I'll try, and I built it, and it worked. You know, and so I kind of stumbled into the electronic thing with the help of my dad, and um, the effects pedals again. I didn't know I was going to do them. I just did, and everybody loved them. So, so and that's how, that's out the coffin. That's that's what happened, you know. And I just happened to also play, so I know what the players want, rather than just some electronics guy sitting there looking at a scope going. Yeah, this oh, is th this point A to point B. Yeah, yeah, kind of I, because that doesn't always work. We call it, my friends and I call it voodoo electronics when you're working with this because you never know what's going to happen. The, the electronic technician will say, well, it's supposed to do this. And I say, but it doesn't. 
<laughs> so then I have to figure out why it doesn't, and I have to run it a different way, you know, do things differently. But that's the way it goes. Yeah, yeah no doubt. <laughs> yeah. Now, the, the question I want to ask you, too, um, with combination with everything, getting back to the music playing, mm -hmm. too, um, how, do you, how do you consider, like, today, uh, you know, the, the, the Internet in, learn, in today's, you know, how it equates to the traditional playing, like you sat home and you worked at it and you learned those licks, you learned mm -hmm. your stuff, you did your scales, you, did, you know what I mean? Like you did, you know, you, you became right. creative. Not that, I'm not saying that the internet's not creative, but I'm saying, what's your thoughts on the? I think that it's great, it's a great help, but the biggest problem with it is that you have these kids that come in and they, they play something and then you say to them, okay, well, that was good, let's jam in A. You know, A minor type yeah. thing, or A Dorian, they'll go like, what? I say, yeah. well, that's what you just did to try and impress me here. I thought you could do that. You know, they can't, they can only do what they were shown. Right. And they don't have anybody to ask a question to. Yeah. You know, so I think it's a great tool in addition to an instructor. I think you can learn to play any instrument a lot quicker today than you could back years ago. Right, yeah. And I think that the blend of the two is is amazing. Amazing. Yeah. One without the other, yeah, it just takes a little yeah, longer. Yeah, you, you need the balance. You yeah, need the balance that's on, what on, I think. on both I of I think them. it's a great tool that, uh, if misused, can harm you a little bit. Yeah, because you, you, you pick up a lot of bad yeah. habits and stuff right. like that, not right. doing the right, right. in the right, right spot. Yeah. Well, if you had advice today to tell, say, kids, and I know we just touched on it, but um, for someone to that has that inspiration that wants to learn, mm -hmm. you know, what advice would you have for the kids today to tell them, like, as far as, you know, you know what I mean? I like, what would you say? Just what I was saying before, I say go on the internet, look at things, um, try to learn as much as you can, but get an instructor. that can Somebody who really can show you how to use these things. You yeah. can learn all your modes, you can do whatever you want, but if you don't know how to use them, yeah, what good are they? They're pretty worthless. And then what I tell people is learn them, practice them, get your fingers working right, properly, and then forget all that stuff and just play your guitar. Yeah, you know, if it's a guitar, way. if it's whatever, I assume right, whatever it's instrument. any other instrument. Yeah, whether it be know. piano and anything, right. no matter just what it is. Just learn this stuff, get your fingers used to doing because your fingers have muscle memory. And then after you learn it, just forget it and play. Listen. Open your ears, listen to what other people are doing, play. Play with other people. That's another yeah, thing, too. To get out live and start to yeah, play with kids. play with you know? other people. It, it's much more rewarding, and you get, you get a whole thing happening. It's almost like a, a like you're all on, you know, in the same spot, you know? Yeah. It, it becomes like a, a real cosmic-type metaphysical experience, you know? Yeah, yeah. And you don't have to do any any kind of drugs or anything. It is the drug. The right. music, let the music be the drug. Do its, do its thing, you know? yeah, absol absolutely. Yeah. Now, you, also, you, I, I guess, uh, what what I think, and I want people to really understand how why it's so important that they should take the lessons, um, and I don't know if you'd be in agree with me on this, but I think, be, like, like Kenny was saying, if you guys, you know, get, have that music foundation in the background and you know, you're playing guitar hypothetically and you take a solo, you want to know where you're going with it. You want to know what notes you can put into sure. that when you're playing with other people. Not, this is the lick I learned and let me just do right, this, in right. a, you know, all the exactly. time. Exactly. You know? Exactly. And you would agree with that, right? Uh, uh, One thousand percent. And I also agree with, if you know what you shouldn't use, try it anyway. Make just you the, like it. I'm, I'm a real experimental type. Um, guy to also, do it also and I, I'm a rule breaker because yeah, yeah. the rules were wi written like way long ago we don't have to abide by all of them right. the, the difference between a musical genius and somebody who knows nothing about music is they can play the exact same thing but the musical genius can tell you why he did it the other person is uh, all new. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. That's a real good point. Okay. All so. right, guys. Listen, I I, I want to thank Kenny very much for coming here and putting in the input. And uh, and you have to try the snarling dog pedal. Um, it's just a very creative guy. And uh, we will be getting back in touch with you. Uh, for, for stay tuned for our next video. And um, keep snarling. Thank, yep, keep snarling. And thanks for coming to. Uh, Encore Chat. Take care, guys. Really put an effort in to learn an instrument. It's so, so important. Thanks again for lending an ear. Thanks for stopping in to Encore Chat. 
I'm Pete Schmiedhauser that owns a small little store called Schmied's Music, 831 Route 10 East in the Pine Plaza Shopping Center in Whippany, New Jersey. Thanks, guys, and stay in touch to see more videos to come.